Hello everybody. So last week we discussed the conservation of mechanical energy and we focused on if only conservative forces are doing work on the objects. Uh, now we're going to see what happens if we have non-conservative forces such as friction and air resistance doing work on an object. So first a review. Um, we'll go to a situation where uh, it is only conservative forces. Uh, so mechanical energy should be conserved. And this example is an object sliding down a frictionless track. So as an object goes slides down a track, um, gravity is acting on it. Um, gravity is a conservative force. Normal is acting on it. However, normal is always 90 degrees to the motion of the object. So the normal force does not do any work on the object. So that will not affect mechanical energy. And it says the track is frictionless, so we don't have to worry about friction. So we do have a situation where um, mechanical energy should be conserved. So at the top of the track, let's just say we let the object go from rest. So at the top of the track, uh, it will have zero kinetic energy. So I've got zero joules labeled for the K column. And uh, that means all of the mechanical energy would be gravitational potential energy. And I just made up a number, uh, 500 joules. So all 500 joules uh, would come from gravitational potential energy. So what happens as it slides down the track? Uh, we'll analyze halfway down the track. So after it's gone halfway down the track, um, an energy transformation happened. Some of that gravitational potential energy it has turned into kinetic energy because now it's it's moving and it's getting faster and faster so it's getting more and more kinetic energy so um, perhaps it's 250 and 250 uh, and it adds up to 500 okay and that might be exactly halfway down the track um, it could be 300 and 200 it could be 400 and 100 uh, depending on where along the track we're talking about but the main idea is that the total mechanical energy has to stay the same. So the total was 500 at the beginning. Oops. Uh, the total has to be 500 at any point along this journey down the track. So now we'll, we'll go down to the bottom of the track. So when it reaches the bottom of the track, uh, right before it hits the ground, that's when it's traveling the fastest. So that's when all of the gravitational potential energy uh, has now turned into kinetic energy. And there's a typo here. Uh, this should say 500. So I'll make sure I switch that on, uh, on your notes. But the gravitational potential energy has gone all the way down to zero. And the kinetic energy has raised all the way up to 500. The total 500 uh, stays the same throughout. Okay, so that's what we talked about last week when mechanical energy is conserved. Uh, what happens if there is friction though? So we're gonna add friction here. So it's the same situation, an object sliding down a track and friction is going to do negative work on the object. So uh, this is the lesson today. It's basically the sentence here, plus there's a formula later on. So this says any work done by non-conservative forces and I'm going to use the symbol W subscript NC to stand for work done by non-conservative forces, such as friction and air resistance, uh, will increase or decrease the total mechanical energy. So this is saying if, if you have some other kind of force uh, that does work on this system, it's either going to increase the amount of joules or it's going to decrease the amount of joules uh, in the object or in the system. If the work done by these non-conservative forces is negative, uh, then it's going to decrease the number of joules of mechanical energy. Uh, that would be like friction and air resistance. It, uh, it goes against the motion, so it does negative work on them. However, if the force is going in the same direction as the motion, so like an applied force, maybe somebody pushing an object, making it go faster, then that's a non-conservative force that does positive work on the system and that will increase the number of joules of mechanical energy. 
Okay, that's all it's saying. So uh, if we go back to this object sliding down a track and friction does negative work on the object, um, the graph at the beginning is still the same. So we're starting at the top of the track, we're letting it go from rest. So the kinetic energy is zero joules. Uh, the gravitational, I uh, made up a number to start, 500 joules. And uh, that would make the total mechanical energy, U plus K equals 500 joules. Now after it slid halfway down the track, now there is friction. So let's just say that friction did negative 50 joules of work on this object. So I say WNC, the work done by non-conservative forces, friction, uh, is negative 50 joules. What that is going to do, what that negative 50 is going to do, it's going to take it away from the total. It's going to take it away from the total. So 500 is going to go down to 450. And then you may have a graph that looks something like this. So we're halfway down the track. So I cut the gravitational potential energy in half. So from 500 joules of gravitational down to 250 joules. Now I know my total has to be 450 now, I just discussed that because of this negative 50. My total has to be 450. So what does that mean about the kinetic energy? Um, so U plus K has to add up to 450 now. So that means this K has to be 200 joules. Okay, so that's different than the frictionless case. In the frictionless case, it was 250 and 250 makes 500. So that's uh, kind of how friction affects the mechanical energy. And now we'll go to the bottom of the track. So it slides some more. It slides down the rest of the track. So now let's say at this point, uh, friction has now done negative 100 joules of work on this object. So what does that mean in terms of mechanical energy? That means this 500, which was the original amount, is going to be less by 100. So my total has to be 400 now. The graph's going to look like this. Um, so we're at the bottom of the track. At the bottom of the track, we have no more gravitational potential energy. All of the energy now is kinetic energy. Um, but we know that the total now has to be 400 joules. So that means the kinetic energy is 400 joules. So that's how non-conservative forces affects uh, mechanical energy. Uh, whether it's positive or negative, uh, whatever number it is, it changes the total. All right, so that means these two have to add up to the new total. I'm going to show you with a skateboarder simulation here. So right now I have a skateboarder at the top of the track. Um, so you see the bar graph here. It says kinetic is zero. Potential is the maximum. Uh, thermal, I'll talk about that later. Uh, and then total is tied with potential. Okay, All there is is potential, so the total is the same. Now, right now, I've got this set to no friction. Okay, friction is set to none. So this is uh, the, the original case. If I hit play, I'll go slow motion as well. What you'll see is that potential goes down while kinetic goes up. Right, so as the person, gets, uh, as the person falls down the track, uh, it gets lower to the ground. So gravitational potential energy decreases. It just gets turned into kinetic because the skateboarder is speeding up the total stays the same. All right, so what happens if I um, put some friction in here? I'll put some friction in here. So now what happens, uh, potential will still go down as he slides down the track, potential still goes down. And he still speeds up, so kinetic still goes up. But now you're going to see the thermal energy bar go up as well. Thermal energy stands for uh, the energy of the molecules in the objects. And because there's friction, when there's friction, you know things get warmed up. So there's more, the, the particles are moving more, they're vibrating more. And uh, that's called thermal energy. It gets, my hands get warmer actually. And so does the track here. So there it goes. 
All right. So you'll see that potential went down, kinetic went up, and thermal went up now because there is friction now. So that's like the non-conservative forces. Um, the total, so this total, it's, it's not mechanical energy, right? This does not say mechanical energy. This is the total of kinetic potential and thermal, uh, which is a little different than what I was doing in the slideshow. But uh, you'll see that the kinetic energy, it's not... Well, it's not as high as it was without friction. Okay, so that's because some of the joules of the mechanical energy got lost because of this friction, because of this thermal energy. I'll show you uh, another simulation here. This is a pendulum. So same thing, I've got kinetic, potential, thermal, which I'm setting to zero at the beginning, okay, no friction at the start, and then the total. When I hit play, the pendulum just goes back and forth. So it's just gravitational and kinetic, just trading off. But the total is always the same. But what happens when I add friction? When I add friction, I'll slow it down too. You'll see that the gravitational and kinetic are still trading places. However, the bars for these two are gradually getting lower. Okay, the green and blue bars are gradually getting lower with each repetition of this pendulum swing because there is friction this time, um, and that's represented by this thermal energy. I'll speed it up again. So look how low these bars are now. So remember, these two added together are the mechanical energy uh, the total mechanical energy is getting smaller and smaller as more friction is doing negative work on this pendulum. Okay, uh, in terms of formulas, this is what our formula looks like now. The starting mechanical energy uh, equals the ending mechanical energy. That was last week. But now we're going to throw in this term, this WNC term, the work done by non-conservative forces. So you add this value, this is in joules, you add this, uh, or if it's negative, then you subtract it uh, from the starting energy, and that's going to get you your final energy. Okay, so it's basically the starting mechanical energy plus or minus the work done by non-conservative forces will equal the ending mechanical energy. There's a couple of other ways to write the formula. So the, this one here, instead of writing ME, mechanical energy, uh, I break it down into kinetic plus potential because that's what mechanical energy is, kinetic plus potential. So kinetic plus potential at the start plus or minus however many joules due to the, the work done by non-conservative forces It'll be negative if it's friction or air resistance. Uh, after you take that into account, then it'll equal the final kinetic plus potential. This last equation is what you'll see on the formula sheet, actually. This is what happens if you, if I take these k's and u's, these k's ones and u ones, I move them to the other side of the equation. Then it becomes k2 minus k1, uh, which is delta k and it'll become U2 minus U1, which is delta U, and that equals to WNC. So that's just like a shorter way to write the formula. It doesn't matter which way you use, uh, they're all the same. So just one question here. I don't have much time here, so I'll go quick through it. An object is traveling through the air as a projectile at point A. It has 200 joules of kinetic energy and 400 joules of gravitational potential. So that's 600 in total. Uh, when it reaches point B, so it flies through the air and it gets to some other point, it now has 100 joules of kinetic. Between points A and B, air resistance did negative 50 joules of work on the object. How much gravitational potential does it have at point B? Um, if you just write the formula out, I don't have much time, so I'll just let you read through it through the slideshow, but you fill in all the numbers where they go you can eventually solve for uh